Hey boys and girls. So today we are going to talk about being a good digital citizen. Again, uh, we're going to do a lesson called Internet Traffic Light Lesson, and it's taken from Common Sense Media. We're going to read the story, I'm a Baked Potato by Elise Primavera. And um, remember to go on Google Classroom after watching the video to fill out your participation form to get credit for participating library this week. And if you haven't found your library books yet, find your library books to return them when you pick up your things this week from school. Um, your teachers did go through the desks um, when they gathered your belongings. And if there were any library books in the classroom, they have already brought them to the library. So if you have any books at your house, you can return them this week when you go to pick up your things. So the lesson today is internet traffic light. And we can already kind of tell it's going to give us three different clues when we're online what's okay to do. We're going to go, we're going to slow down, and then stop, just like a traffic light. So just in general, we're going to talk about how do you stay safe when visiting a website or an app. So when you play outside without a grown-up, what are some of the things you do to stay safe? So if you think about it, when you're playing, we don't talk to strangers that we, people we don't know. We follow the rules. We need help. We go inside and we get help. Those sorts of things. So today, we're going to talk about how to stay safe when you are online and when you're visiting an app or a website. So this right here, it's called trust your gut. And that's an expression that means you should trust your feelings about whether something feels right or wrong. Okay, so let's watch this video called trust your gut. So the digital citizens, which are our little characters on there, they stayed safe by using the internet traffic light. And as you know, the traffic light is tells people when they're driving cars, when they need to slow down or stop, or they can go. So in this way, we're going to use the internet traffic light to tell people that are visiting websites, whether it's not okay to go somewhere or whether it's okay or whether you can go but you need to just pay attention so all right so what is a green website or an app well it's an app that's just right for you or a website it's fun and it has things for you to do or to see and it has appropriate words so just right means that it's appropriate and fitting. So, so you know how we use whether a book is just right for us? We have to, you know, we use the five finger rule to see if it's just right for us. Um, another way of knowing if something's just right for you or like the way movies are, um, rated like a PG-13 is not okay for you 
but that's for older kids. But a G movie or a PG movie, that means parental guidance with your family would be okay. So, so an example of a green website would be pretty much anything you have off the library's homepage. Um, any of the coding things that you go on, the uh, Pebble Go, any of those things are just right and they're good for you. So what is a yellow website or app? Well, a yellow one is a site you're not sure it's just right for you. The words are hard for you to read on the page. It could even ask you for information like who you are, where you live, or your phone number. A site that has you fill out a form. These are all caution, meaning you need to be careful. And this is when you would ask a family member, somebody in your house, the adult in your house, is this okay? Because those are kind of warning signs. If they have you give out some information, you need to ask. It still could be okay for you to go on because some of these websites, like some of the zoo ones, they might ask you for some information, but you know, you just need to check with a parent first with somebody in your house. So a red website, that means stop. So a red website has everything that a yellow one has. So it's got hard words. It asks for your name or your address or your phone number. It has you fill out a form. Plus, it's clearly not just right for you. It's a place you've gone by accident. And boys and girls, so many times you're just clicking on something and before you know it, you've gone someplace and you're like, Oops, it's no biggie. Just ask for help. It's no problem because you probably went to it by accident. I know you don't go looking for these things. Um, it can be filled with pictures and words and videos that are for older kids or adults. And it's also a place where you're allowed to chat with people you don't know. So the, that is a red website or app. And that's something that you need to let your family know that this is where you went on and oops, and they can help put you in a different site that's going to be just right for you. Because I'm sure, and it's okay, because I'm sure everybody's probably been on a red website or app by this point. And it's okay, you just need to let somebody know so then they can put you someplace else. All right, so now I want us to listen to the Trust Your Gut song again. And remember, when we say trust your gut, we mean it's an expression that means you should trust their, that feeling that you have inside about whether it's something or right or wrong. It's that gut feeling. All right, so let's listen to it one more time. We go online to find new things to do and see. The internet traffic light shows where we need to be. So internet traffic light, here's our poem. We can read it together. We go online to find new things to do and see. 
the internet traffic light shows where we need to be. Green means go to sites we trust. Yellow means slow, being safe is a must. Red means stop, ask if it's okay. Trust your gut to go the right way. So we have our three rules, boys and girls. Green means go when you're on something and you see it's just right for you. Yellow, take caution, get an adult. You know, if it has a form on there or ask you for your personal information, it still could be okay, but you need to ask an adult if it's okay. And red means stop. So if anything, if you're on there and it allows you to talk to people you don't know, you know it's got words and pictures or videos that are for older kids or adults, it's okay. You just need to stop. All right, guys. So I hope you take this and you're able to use it to stay safe on the internet. And now what we're going to do, my friends, is I have a great funny story to read to you and it's called I'm a Baked Potato by Elise Primavera. All right, here we go. I'm a baked potato. Is that a baked potato? No, that's a dog. Oh my goodness, this is going to be silly. There was a lady who loved baked potatoes. She ate one every day. She even had a garden, a potato garden in her backyard because she hated to run out. The lady was so, also loved dogs. And so one day she went and got one. She chose him because he seemed to fit so nicely in her arms. He remind me of something, she said to the dog. What could it be? The dog was smooth. The dog was warm. She could have eaten him right up. That's exactly it, she exclaimed. You're just like a baked potato. And that was what she told him the first thing every morning. You're my little baked potato. Throughout the day, she called for him. Here, baked potato. Or commands like, roll over, baked potato. And so on. <coughs> the lady was an excellent pet owner. She and the dog ate all their meals together by the fire. Then one day, the lady went out. The dog went out too. Where's the lady, he wondered. He walked down the driveway. He looked everywhere for her. He walked farther and farther. Where was the lady? He came to a small house. A big dog ran to him and barked nastily. Who are you? He snarled. I'm a baked potato, the dog replied. Oh my goodness, the dog thinks he's a baked potato. You look more like a groundhog to me. Go away before I bite you. The dog had never heard such yelling. Do you know where the lady is? But the big dog just shouted, scram. The dog wandered farther down the street. He looked all around. Was she around the corner? Was she over the next hill? He can't find her, boys and girls. Where's the lady? The sky became dark. The air became cold. The dog became worried. It began to rain. The dog thought of how it felt to be held in the lady's arms. He thought of how right now they'd be sharing a meal together by the fire. 
he thought of the bed where she let him sleep under the covers. The lady, he called, where are you? A fox heard his plaintive cry. Who are you? I'm a, a groundhog. The dog had never been so upset. You look more like a nice plump bunny rabbit to me. The fox licked his lips. I just love bunny rabbit. What a relief, said the dog. Come with me, said the fox. And he led the dog to his creepy house. The fox turned on his oven. You would be good with carrots and onions, he muttered. Who are carrots and onions, the dog asked. Do they know where the lady is? The fox had a devilish grin. We'll ask them, shall we? Oh, no. Just then, a voice said, What do you think you're doing? Right at the fox's door stood an old owl. The owl shook his head at the fox, who knew who he knew to be a coward. Who are you? The owl asked the dog. I guess I'm a bunny rabbit, the dog said, his lips trembling. The owl gave the fox a dirty look. Come with me. Then he took the dog by the paw and brought him to his cheerful house. He looked into the dog's eyes. You are not a bunny rabbit. So I'm a groundhog? The dog has never been so confused. The owl shook his head. I don't think so. I knew it, the dog said. I'm a baked potato. You're a dog, said the owl. Bing! The timer on the owl's oven sounded. This is a baked potato. The dog sniffed it. It smelled like the lady. The dog was taken aback. You seem to know a lot, he said. Do you know where the lady is? I don't know that, the owl said, but I do know that dogs are very good at finding things, especially with their noses. Like the lady, the dog asked hopefully. Like the lady, the owl replied firmly. Outside, the dog took the owl's advice. He sniffed and smelled the lady. The smell wafted on the breeze. He followed it away from the cheerful house, past the creepy house, past the small house, then around the corner and down the street. <coughs> oh, there she is. Soon he could hear her calling, big potato, big potato. Sure enough, standing in the porch light was the lady. Aww. He jumped into her arms and she showered him with kisses. My little big potato, she cooed, squeezing him tight. I should have known you'd like walks in the rain. You're just like me. And there they are, back together again. It was good to be back, but the dog would never be the same. He knew he was not a baked potato or a groundhog or a bunny rabbit. He knew exactly what he was. I'm just like me. And that's the end of our story, boys and girls. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you have a good rest of your week.